Where are we going next? All right. Uh, this person has been waiting forever. Uh, a radical? Here we go. Line four. A radical. You are on with Matt and Dragnaut. Hi, uh, Matt and hi, Dragnaut. Hi. Did I say that last name right? Yeah. Yeah, so normally they, they ask whether or not someone's a, a theist or a non-theist, and you're listed as neither. Right. That's not um, possible. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to short-circuit this right off the bat. Are you actually convinced that a god, any god, is real? I do believe that there's a mind behind reality, yes. So, so, so you're convinced that there is some god thing? Yes, and if given the chance, okay. I'd like uh, then to you, prove that to you. Then you're, the th then you're a theist. I don't know why you would say neither, but okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, to me, this is a fair conversation. I just want to point out a couple things. Um, being that this is a type of mini-debate and you are on the side of a being an atheist, that there is no God or that there is no evidence that there is a God, um, I'm not convinced going, there's a God. Right. You are going to be entrenched in the position that there is no God. That no. You have, that you're, I just said I'm not convinced there is a God. That is not the same as I am convinced there is no God. Okay, so you're saying that you are open to evidence that would change your mind on that. I am. Are you? Yes, I am. I hope my we claim are both open to being convinced of their God. So what you would need to do is define the God and then provide the evidence for that God. Okay. Um, in terms of there being a God, I would say that God is an entity that is conscious and deliberately created the cosmos and everything within it. Okay. That is my definition for God. Are there any other characteristics other than a conscious creator of the cosmos? Um, no, I don't think Okay, so. cool. What evidence can you provide that supports the conclusion that there's a conscious creator of the cosmos? Which I love the alliteration okay. on, so cool. Okay. Um, in terms of there being empirical ev evidence, um... Not all truths are empirical in reality. Would you agree to that? Hello? Do, do you have an example of something that we would accept as true that you can't provide empirical evidence for? I mean, the, there are things that are, that, are, that are true, but they're sort of esoteric. Like, it's true that, that this is one of my favorite songs. So that's... It's true that that's the case, but it's not something I can provide empirical evidence for. But it doesn't matter because it's still esoteric. It's still my subjective assessment. So is there... I'm not aware... Maybe I'm not thinking of it clearly. Is there an objective truth for which we can't provide empirical evidence? Right. There, that's what I'm saying, that there are truths that, that exist. What's an example? That I don't have one right off of my head. And I, I can't come up with one either. So, but it seems like what you're, you're doing is saying that there's a conscious creator of the universe. And right. that this is true, but we're not going to have empirical evidence for it. Is that what you were trying to that, do? That, that, that is what I'm okay. trying to say. I don't understand right. why, how anyone could be convinced reasonably that there is a conscious creator of the universe without empirical evidence. And when you say that this is the sort of thing that you can't provide empirical evidence for, what kind of evidence can you provide? Okay, the evidence that I would be providing would be within reason. That, Philosophical. That doesn't mean anything. Within reason? I, of course we're looking for something that's within reason. I asked for what type of evidence other than empirical are you going to provide? Well, I guess there would be like sil sil syllogisms. Uh, syllogisms are logical arguments, but they are only sound if the premises are accepted as true. And so, depending on what your premises are, you would need to provide empirical evidence for those. Like, what's premise one? Okay. Um, well, what's premise one? The fact... I, I'm about to say it. Okay. The fact that um, there are evolutionary adaptive advantages that beings, creatures have. Okay, um, first, of all, first of all, that's not a premise. So, if you're, if you're going to say syllogism... You ought to know how to construct one. And what you would need is a, 
are two premises that lead to a conclusion where your major and minor premises are linked. It's not the fact that there are evolutionary adaptations. But, okay. but we can continue um, doing this in a non-structured thing, especially since drag's here. So we're starting with premise one being that there, it is a fact that there are evolutionary true. adaptational, ad advantageous evolutionary uh, changes, correct? Yes. Okay. That, that, that's your loose first premise. Keep going. Okay, actually, that was like my first thing um, leading in the evidence. Okay, well, uh, but hang on. Would you and I agree it is a fact that there are advantageous evolutionary changes? Yes. Yep, I, we're, we're in agreement with that. Okay. Uh, would you also agree that we did not will ourselves those evolutionary adaptive advantages? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Neil, you can't okay. just, you know, imagine yourself uh, producing a stronger there's no product. Reason to think, there's no reason to think that any change in allele frequency over time or any evolutionary change is subject to any will at all. Okay. Well, the Be fact Be careful that when you say okay to that because that just, just I see short circuits exactly where you're going. Okay. Well, each creature being perfectly adapted for their particular environment. No. Uh, no. Something, and that's an intelligent um, feature. I, I, don't think no. you, I don't think you heard us because as soon as you said each creature is perfectly adapted to their environment, both of us immediately said no because that's not what evolution says. Not, it says nothing about perfect adaptation. I don't even, how would you even establish okay, that? Okay, let's remove, let's remove the word perfect. Each creature is well adapted to their environment. You couldn't even make that determination. That depends on the environment. That depends on the time of year. That depends on the organism. That depends on a lot of factors, my man. And the ones that aren't particularly well adapted to the environment, those are the ones that go instinct because you, you seem to be looking at it on a, on a creature by creature basis, but evolution affects populations, not individuals. Bingo. Okay. Birds having wings. Is that an evolutionary advantage? Uh, <laughs> It, it is both an advantage and a disadvantage. It, it's all contextual. It depends on the situation. If they're being chased by a predator on the ground and the wings allow them to fly up, then yes, that's an advent, advantage in that situation. If they're not being chased by a predator on the ground, but they're being chased by a faster predator that's in the air, then it may be a disadvantage. If, if their wings being hollow fundamentally changes how much they're able to move and how they have to get food and the, the weather uh, changes, that can be a disadvantage. You can't look at a trait and say, this is an advantage. Is intelligence an advantage? In some situations it is, and in some situations it may not be. That's not, this is fundamentally not how evolution works. And it's, 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 an, it's a, a wrong way to look at the situation saying, here is a trait, this is an advantage. Okay, um, sticking with the bird example for a second. Um, birds have very good eyesight to spot prey on the ground. Some, some birds, birds do, some don't. Would we say most birds do? I would even be able to say that, honestly. I'm not an ornithologist. Let's just pick a bird, a hawk. Yeah. We, we'd say hawk, right, let's go, hawks let's have go better with eyesight. Let's, go with, a, let's go with a bird of prey. Hawk. Sure. Birds of prey I, I, have good eyesight. Okay. Good is a Weasley term. Um, you can't even necessarily say better. For eyesight. In relation to us. It, you still can't Compare. say better because what is better? Do they see farther they can see further than we do? They, they can see further than we can do, but do they see as much of a visual spectrum as, they, as we do? Are they able to distinguish color greater than we are? So, see, see what I'm saying? You can't just go with okay. eyesight. In terms of vision and distance, birds have be a, a better eyesight. Can a hawk see farther than me? Yes. All right, and I'm saying that that would be not be to be seeing viewing prey from the ground, but from the sky, which would go back to the wings. But in any case, all right. The second piece of evidence I have is the fact that there the reason for death is an intelligent one. Whoa, 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 there was whoa, overpopulation. Whoa, I so we're still trying to get to a conscious creator of the cosmos. You just said the reason for death is an intelligent one, and I, I, I'm not being obtuse. I don't know what the hell you mean. Okay, I'll, I can explain it for you. Um, 
if there is no death, there would be overpopulation of species. No, that's not necessarily true. Your, your body could just, uh, I don't know, get teleported to a different dimension. I mean, that, there's all types of stuff that could happen. You could just stop having sex. Yeah, we could reach a population yeah. cap and then everyone's genitals yeah. would stop working. Hold on. If there was no death... You could just have nothing but gay sex and there would be no overpopulation. It wouldn't be people so bad. People would be still having sex. What, I just said you could have nothing but say, uh, homosexual sex and there would be no overpopulation. But we would yeah, but, we have heterosexual... Sorry. Why are we... Bad joke. Uh, Keep going. Wow. Okay. I'm sorry. Is, is, it, is this like a serious program or are you just like interrupting me every five seconds? If you would say so, so, we're interrupting you to clarify all the ways you are thinking about this in the wrong way. Right, no, and I'm trying to speak, and you're, like, cutting me off before I even get to say what my thing is. You, you said something that needed clarification or correction, so we did that. Okay. If I'm saying that if there was no death, there would be overpopulation of species. And we say, so no, we that's not true. Heterosexual pop. How can, how can it not be true if there would still be reproduction? I just explained to you. That you could have no death and everybody could be having gay sex and now there's not overpopulation. But, or you could also have no death and everyone still be having heterosexual sex. Yes. And there still be an, and there would be an overpopulation. You are absolutely correct. My objection was that you said you, your, your statement suggested that there would necessarily be overpopulation. And I was pointing out that that's not necessarily true. In the same way that when you talk about eyesight, you say this is, your implication is that this is necessarily better when it's actually contextual. It is actually based on the situation. You are making okay. broad-based generalizations when you need to be more precise how on earth are we getting to therefore there is a conscious creator of the cosmos well i'm trying to get to that if you're failing to get to that you're, you've made well, that's because you're no. helping me fail to it uh, yes i'm like helping you fail i'm pointing out where you're failing you have made mistake after mistake after mistake not one of your premises as loose as they are has been sound and so Sir. if you can't come up with a sound premise then you have no argument Sir, I am trying to make an argument. You keep interrupting it. You are so, trying to make an argument, on. and you are just, fa failing because every point of your argument is flawed. You can't add up a whole bunch of flaws and get to, therefore, there's a conscious creator of the cosmos. If everything was, all other um, considerations were the same, and there was no death, if everything else in life was still playing out in life, the way that it does, and there was no death, there would be overpopulation. And Could we agree to that? No. How would that be wrong? Because we may advance enough to move off of this planet and go populate elsewhere and keep spreading. I just said if everything else stayed the same as it was now, okay, we aren't on the planet. Why would I accept your ridiculous hypothetical that nothing would why change? Why is it ridiculous? Because you say it's ridiculous? Yes, it's ridiculous because I say it's ridiculous. You're not the judge and jury of intelligence. I'm, I'm the judge and jury of what I find ridiculous. You bet I am. And when I explain well, it to you, objective, is it not? Is when, it not when objective? I, yes, it is. And when I explain to you why it's ridiculous, then we all get to determine whether or not you are, are being reasonable in determining what's ridiculous. Because what you want to do is say, if nothing else changes, when the question here is, you said death is intelligent. No, I said the reason for death is intelligent. Right. What is, the but, reason but, for death. But what is the reason for death? You haven't given, what is the reason for death? The reason for death is to prevent overpopulation. No, that's an assumption. That's an assumption on your part. You are reaching a conclusion and okay. not providing any evidence that. Okay, that, let's you, move on. You, you, no, we're not moving on. Let me finish here. <laughs> you are you are asserting that death exists specifically to avoid overpopulation, and you would like to say that this is a necessarily an intelligent decision. That is not necessarily why death exists. And even if death exists in part or in whole to curb overpopulation, there's no demonstration that this was an intelligent decision. This could be the natural order of when a population gets to a certain size, it can no longer sustain itself, and death is what happens. Wouldn't that be an intelligent prerequisite? No. 
Uh, I'm still it's like not a stupid one. So, okay. oh my God. So how Go I'm still always confused about these these uh, intelligence arguments. I have yet to see or experience or know about an intelligence that lacks a substrate. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay, the substrate would be the laws of nature. That, so you're this abstract, this nebulous concept of intelligence is being is being attached to. Uh, another abstraction. Laws are something would be instructions, not just restrictions. No, they're descriptions. The laws of nature are descriptive, not prescriptive. They don't descriptive to our subjective view, prescriptive from an objective lens. No. <laughs> what? Physics okay. works the way physics works. Chemistry works the way chemistry works. There's not any any reason to propose, to presume that there's an intelligence giving out instructions about how hydro hydrogen and oxygen should combine. Is our view the only view that matters? I'm not sure. Our human addresses. view, our human perspective. At what what we our perspective uh, has little to do. It's, it's not even remotely germane to the objective state of affairs. What I think about uh, hydrogen and oxygen have, has no impact on how they bond to one another, just as the, the okay. laws of logic, you know, as people like to reference. So you can defer to these abstractions all day long, but they're going to be what they are regardless of we're here or not to perceive them. Right. And what I'm saying is that there are laws that exist that we observed and articulated, but we did not create. Yes. You're, that we are observing, so that would make them objective no, and us no. subjective well, for describing stop. them. There are laws that exist that we did not create. Now prove that some other intelligence did create them. This is where you need to demonstrate that a law is prescriptive and from an intelligence and not merely descriptive being recognized by an intelligence. Okay. The fact that um, nature and everything in it is set up in a certain particular way. That's a nice that presumption. In it, that's a presumption too? Yeah. They, so you're presuming that something that set up Earth something. set up? Yes, that everything is set it, up. How do you demonstrate that? How do I demonstrate that life was performed, um, that life has played out incrementally, when that's how we viewed everything in history? How have you personally ascertained that an entity fiddled with reality. It stuck its tendrils into our reality and crafted these abstractions the and these The fact order. that there's an order to everything. Okay, okay, how? Okay, now your entire argument is we perceive order, therefore there must have been a, an intelligence who, craft, who crafted that order. Please demonstrate that the only way to achieve the order we perceive is if there is an intelligence that crafted it. Because everything that we, everything that's accidental does not create intelligence from it. And there is life that came from the so, chaos of the universe. This is another assertion of yours. Please demonstrate that intelligence can only come from an intelligence. Intelligence can only come from an intelligence. So what created the original intelligence? Nothing created the original intelligence. If it's infinite, it doesn't have a beginning. Man, that sounds like special pleading to me. But you still didn't demonstrate that the only way well, to arrive... Hold on, to where arrive, did science come from? Philosophy, right? You, you still science, haven't demonstrated that an intelligence can only come from an intelligent hold origin. Hold I, on. I, no. I'm, 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 I'm I asked the, the question. I asked the question. You, you have, called... No, I've, stop. I've stop, stated, Radical. Stop. You, you call just it. asked me to answer the question. And now I'm telling you to Which fucking stop. It? So stop Let's and... Stop fucking to me, dude. I'll fucking curse at whoever the fuck I want. And Stay on the line, back. and I you're will curse your little bitch ass, ass into oblivion. <laughs> I'm going to curse. I'm going to put you on hold so you can listen to me spew forth fucks and shits and whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> stop. You called in to argue for a conscious creator of the cosmos. And we asked you to do that. And at every turn, you came up with some sort of loose premise that involves some form of special fucking pleading or certain fucking exemptions or bald-ass 
fucking assertions. And we have sat here and we've tried to point out and we've asked questions. And you keep getting irritated that we didn't just accept the garbage that you spewed forth initially when all we were doing was trying to guide you towards an actual argument that is cogent and supported by evidence. And every time either one of us have gotten you to amplify what you're saying, you go back to yet another assertion. Well, you can't have intelligence without an intelligence to guide it. You can't have order without an order to guide it. At no point did we say that you were wrong. We asked you to demonstrate that you were correct. So demonstrate that order and intelligence can only come from an intelligence because that's the whole thing you're trying to do. You are now off hold and free to moan about my cursing. I just want to have an intelligent conversation, man. I'm actually a big fan of you. I love what you did to Peterson. Anyway, um, there's also no random. That's also subjective. I'm just going down the uh, plethora of oddities and peculiarities and uncomfortable truths that we avoid in life to try to make come to the conclusion that there is no God. And I'm not saying that there's a Christian God. I'm just saying that there is something weird going on in life that lends No, to sir. No, sir. And now you're lying. Now, now you are backtracking to the point where you are twisting yourself into knots. First of all, atheism is not the assertion that there is no God. So I don't know why you would do that. You're not just talking about weirdness. You affirmed at the beginning of this call that you believe there is a conscious creator of the cosmos and that you could prove it. This, you didn't call in and say, hey, there's a bunch of weirdness. I don't think we can conclude there is no God, because if you just said that, I'd have said, I agree with you. There's a bunch of weirdness, and maybe we can't con conclude that there is no God, or at least... I said that there was no way to prove it empirically. I said it would have to be done through reason. I, I, Go back in the tape. That's what I said. I, I, did I say you didn't say that? You just said that I'm... No, sir. You just said that there is not a bunch of things. When I said that it's a... Um, an, um, uh, an amalgamation of evidence. It's not just one thing that can be pointed to. Just a second ago, you backtracked from your original position, which is that there is a conscious creator of the cosmos to... And I'm still on that. Bye. Mm. <laughs> Stay on it, bro. He's a big fan of the show. He's a big fan of the show.